Before I share a little bit of my story, there are three things that I'd like you to keep in mind as, as you listen to uh, this piece of my history. The first is my faith. That's not today's topic, so I won't be discussing it, but it underlies everything that I do, and it's my foundation. The second is, although I have taken uh, positions, been in several positions for which I was the first woman, that was never my goal. I never went into a position or a job interview with a chip on my shoulder or an agenda. And third, having given what I just said, it also never ever occurred to me that just because I was a woman, I couldn't do that particular position. And a little bit about my history so that those watching or listening can see uh, what has come before where you are now. When I was in high school in the late 1950s, in one of my classes, we were told, girls, you should not consider going to college because you will not be able to get a husband or it will be harder to get a husband and get married. And if you do, there are only two professions that you should really look at, nursing or teaching. Well, obviously, I didn't take that advice. I graduated from Whitworth with my bachelor's and later on a master's at Pacific Lutheran out of, um, out of Tacoma. After that, um, I went to a job in San Francisco. I'm trying to truncate this a lot because of the time. Um, I took a position in San Francisco. I was an undergrad at a major bank in their corporate section. Before I left that bank, I was the first woman who had been placed in a certain position. Fast forward after two or three years working for a bank in Honolulu, my husband and I returned to Spokane to finish our college. I went to employment security to seek job referrals, looking for something in banking. And as I was describing to the, the man what I had done, especially in San Francisco, he all of a sudden began looking uh, confused and a little bit puzzled and he's, he's flipping through the pages on this book and he's saying, we don't have anything like that in Jobs for Women. Well, who knew that in 1965 there were separate jobs for women and men and uh, you didn't cross over. Anyway, I did work for a bank, graduated from college, and then began my 30-year career in public service and government. And I was initially a caseworker for uh, public assistance there in uh, Spokane. I had primarily a mental health and child protective services caseload. After a few years of uh, doing that, it looked like there was going to be a rift, so I began uh, filling out applications for other state jobs. And one of the things that you'll hear me say several times is be willing to take risks. I think uh, I'm not sure who else you are hearing or studying for women's history but my guess is you'll find every one of us had to take risks. So take risks. Don't be afraid to take risks, try new time, new things. I didn't uh, get riffed. I came close, but I didn't get riffed. But eventually I had a job interview for a classification counselor at a male prison in Shelton, the Washington Correction Center. At that time, they did have men and women as classification counselors but they were primarily housed in buildings separate from the cell blocks or the living units for the men. That was not the case at Shelton where they had not too, they had recently moved uh, the services into the living units or the cell blocks for the men. So when I went for my interview, there was virtually nothing about my qualifications for the job. Uh, why did I want it? Uh, what would it mean? They took me down to show me where my office was and uh, the whole thing was, you know, there's never been a woman down here. They showed me the open showers. There's never been a woman down here. And if you keep in mind my point number three, I didn't see a reason that I couldn't do the job. I was interested in it and they hired me. It was a great job. I loved it, learned a lot. It's another thing I recommend for all of us. Again, don't be afraid to try new things and always be willing to learn. So again, fast forwarding, I was there, then I was a unit supervisor at that facility, and then I had an extraordinary opportunity to be part of a team of developing an entirely new small prison concept in Spokane, uh, Geiger pre-release. It was an excellent, excellent job when we were, there, was no, there were no blueprints. We had to develop everything, decide what it looked like, decide who we would accept from the other prisons. 
did that for several years, and then Washington State Penitentiary received the, um, the authorization for a third associate superintendent. My boss in Spokane felt that um, that would be a good position for me. I wasn't sure I was interested, but he recommended me, so I went down for an interview. My, my boss, uh, the superintendent at that time, who did hire me, Bob Castava, was someone that I decided I would really like to work for, plus I was ready for a new challenge. He didn't mention to me that there had never, had never been a female associate superintendent. That wasn't, that wasn't an issue for him. He was looking for competence. So I accepted the job, and in the early 1980s, I became the uh, first, and uh, I started to say so far only, but that's not the case. I was the first uh, associate superintendent at Washington State Penitentiary. I hadn't really anticipated uh, the, uh, the news blitz. In fact, I neglected to tell you about the news story when I went to work as the first female in a male uh, institution as a counselor. The Tacoma News Tribune had a banner headline on their local section that said, Lone Woman Counsels 742 Inmates. Well, that wasn't true. I had 60 on my caseload. And my male, my male counterparts uh, were not very excited. So the same thing happened in a sense when I moved to the penitentiary as the associate superintendent. Uh, they interviewed my boss, uh, it was a big deal, never been a woman as an associate. And what he said is what I think all of us would like to be said about us if somebody did an article on what we were doing on our job. He didn't focus on the fact that I was a female, it wasn't an issue to him. He focused on uh, my background, what I had done, uh, said I had had various levels of responsibility, performed well, and he considered me capable and competent, and he was confident that I could do the job. High praise indeed. I, again, great job. Those of us who can have positions or jobs that we really love and challenge us, uh, those, those, that's a privilege. We should be very thankful. After a few years doing that, I was again moved way out of my comfort zone as I moved to headquarters in Olympia to become the uh, first director of a newly formed division in the Department of Corrections. And again, being a female there was not was just not an issue. There were six or seven of us on exec staff, and three of us were women. Uh, it was an excellent job, totally stretched to me again in, in many ways. Uh, I learned to interact with the legislature and other agencies. Um, like I say, take risks, be willing to try new things. I went from there to be an assistant director of prisons with uh, four superintendents reporting to me. But my husband and I really wanted to get back to Eastern Washington. We loved Walla Walla. So I took another big risk. I went to my boss, the director of prisons, and said, if there's ever an opportunity, I would like to go back to Walla Walla as the superintendent of the penitentiary. As it turned out, my um, timing was perfect, and in the short time uh, I was back, it's the first, first female superintendent of the maximum security prison in Washington State, Washington State Penitentiary. Now you'd think by now I'd get a clue that some of these firsts were a big deal, but this one, this one was um, probably surprised me, I guess, for lack of a better word. Of course, the UB would have done an article because they had a new superintendent. Spokesman Review did an article, other papers. One of the news headlines was, this woman's home is in the big house, and things like that. The uh, Seattle Post-Intelligencer was a print newspaper then, and so they sent a reporter over, I think for a couple of days. She followed me around and asked questions and stuff, and then they did their Sunday supplement, uh, the magazine that the newspapers put in. Uh, the cover picture in their main article was on the woman superintendent at the penitentiary. And I need to stop right here. I was not the first female superintendent of a male prison in Washington State. That honor belongs to Peggy Hoffman, who uh, was at Pine Lodge in Spokane many years ago. And I also really want to give honor uh, here in Walla Walla for the uh, women who 
broke the ground at the penitentiary, the uh, female correctional officers especially. Their story would be very different than mine and, and others. The um, uh, Carol Moses, who was a uh, correctional program manager and others. So I want to give them honor. But anyway, I'm at the penitentiary. Uh, great job. Um, after a while, everybody forgets that I'm the first female and we can all do our job. And as I wrap this up, I want to share a couple of the things that I were, were my values that I wanted to bring to any position I had, uh, whether it was my entry-level file clerk at San Francisco or my uh, essentially CEO at the penitentiary. I worked hard. I was always willing to go above and beyond. I wanted to be sure that I gave, uh, that I exceeded expectations. I always wanted to make my boss look good. I wanted to make my fellow workers look good. And later on when I had people reporting to me, I was their champion. I wanted them to succeed. Beyond that, I think there are character qualities that we, we as women, men as well, but that we bring or must bring to any position. And that is our character. Uh, character with quality, integrity, honor, humility. We should be willing to serve. We bring a passion. And you know what else we bring, women? We've got brains. So let's take our brains, let's apply them to the characters, qualities that I just mentioned, and let's steer our department, our agency, our area. Let's, let's take our brains and those qualities and steer the destiny in, into the future, a destiny of excellence. Personally, I am honored and humbled to have been a part of the parade of women in public service and government. Thank you.